Hello, uh, my name is Dimitri Kanarov and I'm a journalist with the Pulitzer Center of Crisis Reporting. Uh, right now we're doing a project on Crimea, it's called Ukraine, Crimea Under Siege. And um, it covers the latest events here, uh, which some have called uh, the biggest crisis uh, in between EU, US and, and Russia since the end of the Cold War. Now Crimea is an extremely interesting region, it's a peninsula on the northern coast of the Black Sea. and um, it has, it has had a very rich history, um, it, uh, all kinds of tribes and peoples have uh, populated this place for centuries. It was here that the Crimean War happened in uh, the 1850s, it was here that also some of the biggest battles during World War II occurred. And uh, in, 1950, in 1954 Khrushchev actually transferred Crimea um, from uh, the Russian Soviet uh, Republic to the, to the Ukrainian one. And this has been one of the um, major flashpoints at this point uh, right now because Crimea has uh, a, a majority Russian population. Uh, it's the only region in Ukraine with a majority Russians, Russian population, uh, 60%. It also has about 25% Ukrainians and about 12-15% to Tatars, Crimean Tatars, who are the indigenous population of uh, Crimea. Now, uh, what's been happening here uh, in the last in the last couple of weeks uh, has been extremely dynamic, extremely interesting, uh, very fast paced. So it's been difficult sometimes to cover the events, but we, what we've tried to do is to uh, look at some of the roots of the problem, of the, of the um, uh, conflict, whether they're ethnic or whether they're in fact more socio-economic, um, having to do with people who um, have fallen through the cracks after the end of the Soviet Union. Uh, you know, uh, with the general economic crisis in Ukraine and this dissatisfaction with standards of life, so various, various, um, um, various uh, issues. We've also uh, tried to cover the the point of view of the Crimean Tatars, the indigenous population, and their organization of, of self-defense units right now. Uh, we've also been covering the um, uh, the last remnants of the pro-Ukrainian movement here uh, in Ukraine. Um, and also a little bit of theater, um, so uh, the Simferopol theater. So uh, we've been—it's—it's it's a very complex issue. It's—it's uh, it's been sometimes difficult to, uh, as a single journalist and a photographer, to actually cover all of this. Um, uh, but uh, but we've, we've we've done our best, I think, and we've tried to cover uh, the different uh, the different aspects of the crisis here. My name is Buriana Kazarova, and I'm a freelance Bulgarian photographer. I'm uh, working together with the freelance journalist Dimitar Kenarov with the support of the Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting on the current issues in Crimea. During the last two weeks, few weeks, we covered many, uh, many stories and as a photographer I really found it challenging to, to take pictures to document what is happening here as many journalists, photographers and cameramen were attacked and many of them abused during the coverage of these uh, events. Uh, what I really uh, felt during the last few weeks, especially before the referendum and uh, on the day of the referendum, is that uh, the journalists were all over, kind of followed, and every each one of them uh, had uh, small or bigger problems with uh, the coverage during those uh, events. Uh, personally, me, uh, I had the problem with um, and then to find the masked man in the first days of our, our coverage here in the center of Simferopol when my camera was stolen during those men put a gun on at the head of my journalist Dimitar Kenaro. Uh, happily we went uh, ha uh, safe from the event but uh, the stress that something really bad can happen uh, during the coverage here for us was uh, like following me all the time so um, the pictures I took uh, are expressing my point of view on the things which happened during the last weeks and I hope this will be enough for the viewer to understand how difficult it is really to work in this kind of uh, situations.